Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. You're behind a driver who doesn't immediately move over when traffic clears. So what do you do? Wait for the car to move? Blow your horn? Or just ignore the person while your blood pressure climbs 10 points? Rushing, pushing, pressure to get moving, it becomes an addiction that only you can break. When marriage and family therapist Eric Johnson began expressing his pent-up frustrations in his driving, his wife complained. Others saw his anger, too, but not him. Managing my emotions would be easy, he said, if other people would stop pushing my buttons. He then began thinking about his own life, understanding that the pent-up feelings didn't begin when he turned the key to start the car. He carried them with him, emotional baggage, and the traffic simply intensified them. You know, he's not alone either. You either control your emotions or they control you. So how do you break the addiction to busyness? If you're a type A person, highly motivated, breaking the addiction doesn't come easy. Try these ideas. First, Ask whether your expectations are realistic. What do you expect of yourself, of your family, and of others? What you can do, others may not be able to accomplish. And to be angry or irritated with them or berate them only creates a tension that can escalate out of control very quickly. Can we excuse our escalating stress, which causes relationship problems, by saying, well, these are tough times, everybody's under pressure, and I can't do anything about it, I can't help what I do? Who would deny the fact that life is often hard? But each one of us can choose whether or not we will see beyond the immediate storm and the thunder clouds to what lies beyond. Preserving relationships especially involving your husband or wife and children, your friends and associates, is far more important than allowing your stress to wound them. When your expectations have become unrealistic, it's time to take the next step, something only you can do. Unload the excess weight you're carrying in your life. You can't do it all, remember? Okay, Decide what you realistically can handle and draw a line and say, no more. Of necessity, you have to program some downtime to enjoy, to sit and relax and reflect on God's blessings in your life. On his 75th birthday, Billy Graham was asked how he wanted to be remembered. Thinking for a moment, he said, I'd like to be remembered as someone who was fun to be around. Surprised? I was. To be very honest with you, I began thinking about my own life and how my grandchildren would remember me. And I decided that remembering me as a loving person, someone they enjoyed being with, was more important than writing one more book or doing one more conference. Taking this step means going through another door. Prioritize your expectations. Make three categories— a must-do, a should-do, and I'll do it when I can list. Question. Is it possible we have taken on much more than God ever intended us to deal with? When your must-do is too long, you know you're facing a problem. Stop pushing. You're the only one who can hit the stop button. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.